Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late July 2023 and our friend CH has made a new naval asset for DCS and we're going to have a look at it and then we're going to put it in a big naval battle. Hello CH. Hello. You've made the Type 022 Chinese Guided Missile Fast Attack Craft. It features a front-mounted AK-630M Seawiz, 8 YJ-83 anti-ship subsonic missiles in this nacelle here and here, a Type 362 air and surface radar, a HEOS 300 electro-optical system with a maximum speed of 36 knots. What else do we know about this craft, CH? It's uh, one of these ideas, you know, about um, uh, swarming attacks, uh, which has been mm. something that a lot of countries have been trying out. These are supposed to be uh, uh, running in littoral zones, coastal areas around China. Uh, I think they made around somewhere around 80 of these and they are supposed to be working in squadrons of eight each and they are massively offensive weapons as you can see mm. it's it has no uh, own defense more or less so you're actually supposed to swarm uh, large carry groups or something like that and uh, fire all their anti-ship missiles uh, and then uh, turn back. Roger, is a twin hull design. Do we know what it is? Yeah, exactly. It's a catamaran, yeah. Uh, so it, it will perform pretty well in, in rather uh, rough waters uh, without issues. These are something that scare me, viewers. Small, almost expendable boats in mass, cheap to manufacture, relatively easy to man, firing multiple long-range anti-ship missiles. And today we're going to have a look at exactly that. Our scenario today is thus. We have a modern 2020s US carrier strike group sailing past Guam here, when all of a sudden spotted just 80 miles northeast are a huge fleet of 40 of these fast attack craft. They've been hidden in and around the islands, Tinian, Saipan and whatnot. They formed up and they've charged the carrier strike group. They've been spotted 80 miles away by AWACS and or other sensors, but now they need to defend themselves. In my role play, the carrier strike group has changed formation to defensive from that flank. So we've got the carrier here. She has six escorts, four Arleigh Burke Flight 3 and two Ticonderoga CMP. They formed a five escort ship crescent to the attacking flank with five mile spread also kept their uh, close escort in close aboard her are a large squadron of 32 super hornets ready to scramble which is a bit unrealistic but we're doing it anyway uh, they have each of them four agm 158 c larasm modern anti-ship missiles and that is going to be what they are going to punch back with let's have a closer look at the uh, escort ships first of all the Tyco of which there are two in SAM configuration have ESSMs 64, SM2 32, SM6 56, SM3 8, Tomahawk 8 and Harpoon 8 and the Arleigh Burke Flight 3 in SAM configuration ESSM 64, 32 SM2, 32 SM6, 8 SM3 and 8 Tomahawk. The fast landing craft attack will have 40 of them, each firing eight missiles. That is 320 missiles, if my maths is right, which is a lot of missiles to be pretty much simultaneously fired. And of course, this is what this kind of thing is designed for. The US carrier group does have more than 320 missiles to defend with, but that doesn't mean they're going to be able to defend the missiles. I've absolutely not run this through, but before we do, can we have a prediction from UCH? Are any vampires going to get through? And if so, what kind of damage do you expect? Yeah, I think you mentioned it before. The YA-83 isn't the most modern of the missiles. It's, it's rather slow, but it's a lot of them. I mean, the whole point here is the swarm attack. So, um, yeah, we can definitely see leakage. It, yeah, I think it's possible. One thing you're going to say, viewers, as well, is that, or oh, hang on, Cap, you shouldn't have put them together like this. You should have spread them uh, northeast, southwest. And that's actually kind of old 1980s, 1990s thinking. Uh, what we're finding now on sims that we do is because Aegis is so omni aware, especially when coupled with the Mark 41 VLS system, that 
actually firing from one direction tends to give us a better chance of leakage uh, because you've got missiles all crisscrossing in front of each other and stuff like that than if they're spread out. Um, so hence we're doing more swarm attacks like this. They tend to produce better results. And welcome into the battle. Let's have a quick look around before we unpause it. Here are the 40 fast attack craft. As you can see, they're kind of modern and stealthy catamaran design. Uh, let's have a look at the Americans. Here we have the Nimitz class carrier, which I suppose should be a Gerald Ford, but they're still going to be operating Nimitz, obviously, with loads of F-18s, with loads of modern anti-ship missiles. We've got the Arleigh Burke Flight 3, which technically should only have one Sea Whiz, but it's near enough for today, and Ticonderoga modernised version. Uh, CH, will you be a deer and please unpause? Yes. And we're off, viewers. Here we go. Right, scoreboard will uh, come up on the top right and let us know when things have been fired hopefully if it works yes it has something's been fired it's on the blue side oh harpoons some old janky ass uh, 1980s harpoons being fired don't worry too much about them they won't have much effect on today there the nacelles have opened look at that smash yg 83s oh, yeah, look at that viewers wowie look at that yeah, um, we love the swarm attacks. Obviously, <laughs> it's it, good on the screen. <laughs> yeah, obviously, it's, you know, it's bigger than the attack would be in real life. But I don't know. Maybe if you were going for a full carrier strike group, fire everything, use all of them. Yeah, so yeah. maybe. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was actually the point with these. Yeah, exactly. And and these uh, China are not alone in doing these. Loads of countries have this idea or, or corvettes. So there's, there's a lot of uh, Russian small corvettes, guided missile corvettes, and stuff like this. Uh, you know, for exactly this kind of purpose. Oh, I can just sit and watch that all day, viewers. Oh, you can see at the top, 240 anti-ship missiles fired. I think my um, prediction was correct of 200, uh, 320. 320, yeah, 300, exactly. That's right, yeah. That's not predictions, that's math. That's actual math, yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's right. Uh, right, here we go, viewers. Oh, look how fast they're covering 80 oh, wow. miles. <laughs> look how fast they're covering 80 miles. They're 320, oh. 320 wow. viewers. We have never fired this many missiles, and it's running amazingly smooth as well. Kudos to DCS for allowing us to run this. Uh, right, I better go and check out the Americanos. Uh, let me get here. Now, when will they detect those missiles, and when will they respond? We shall see. There, there. <laughs> no, they weren't. Listen, they were harpoons. Yeah. They were harpoons. Yeah. Ignore them. Yeah, how yeah. about just firing? It, yeah, second. exactly. We, we, we will actually, we won't miss it when they start firing. Yes, we won't miss for it. For real. <laughs> Look how quickly they're going, viewers. Distance to group is 40 nautical miles. Lorasms are being fired. Oh, it's all too much. The planes have taken <laughs> off. The first batteries of Lorasms are being fired. Um, but, but they are all expendable. I mean, uh, that's the yep. point with these. They have exactly almost right. none defensive weapons. They don't care. Even the, even the Sea Whiz is an old uh, Russian copy of the AK-630 from the 70s. Once they fired their missiles, they've done their job. They can go and uh, they can go rust in hell, basically. Yeah. That's one of the things that makes me makes me so worried about them is that they are just for that big one-time swarm only. And yeah. um, still no defense missiles going out, I mean, apart from the Lorasms, which are going out. But they go pretty low. Um, I was reading Red Storm Rising today. I didn't know Aegis was so old. Aegis is mid-80s. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I know it's all been modernized. <laughs> look at this. I'm going to... Oh, I can't pause it. It's not my server. But look, these missiles are going past these missiles. Look at that. <laughs> hundreds of... You can't hear it, but it's the hundreds of sonic booms. Uh, CH. Yeah. Here's a bunch more. Yeah. It's so bad it could actually hit each other. Yeah, something just hit you. Something just did that right there. <laughs> That's a first. Yes. The Rasms are catching the harpoons up. Something's happening. Here we go. The Sams are out, viewers. Let's find out what they are. They are SM2, SM6. SM2 yeah. and SM6. Everything now, yeah. Fired a range of oh, Tema. Oh, the, the point blank. Oh my God, what do we yeah, want? Yeah, they have to give it all now. Wow, look at that, viewers! <laughs> oh man, that is just what it would look like in real life, viewers. The fire everything button has gone down. Yeah. And because those YJ83s are going so low, they're not fast and they're not even really modern, but they're so low. They can't be yeah. seen until, you know, 15 miles or something, which makes reaction time problematic. Yeah, how close are they? Yeah. Um, yeah. They are. 
two miles. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Wow. Uh -oh. Aegis <laughs> has broken down. Aegis has broken down. No, it hasn't. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. It's yes. broken down. It's broken down. Yeah. Even the super isn't firing properly. Bash! 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 Oh no! There's was so that, many of them. that Ollie Burke got smashed. Yep. So much going on, viewers. Oh, we're more getting through. Oh no, it's failed. Oh no, they're all going for. No, they're not. Scratch that. Yeah. It couldn't but handle it. They're working really hard, but it's so many missiles. Yeah. And Aegis in real life has limits. And plus, even if it didn't have limits, there's only so many channels that you can actually yeah. fire a missile with. Oh, the only thing I can think that's going to save the American carrier is the fact that um, anti-ship missiles and DCs are bloody stupid. And they all go for the same target, yeah. which I don't think is ever going to get fixed. But Yeah, the SM-60s here have their own seekers, but the SM-2s have, wow, Just look at that. have, have to rely on the... Uh, uh, it's a CC yeah. map coming active. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened so fast, viewers, but that's the whole idea of a mass vampire attack. Everything hits within seconds of each other. Right, let's try and ascertain what happened. I think America got off extremely light, and I know everyone in the comments is going to get angry, but I think that was actually probably fairly realistic. So, China fired... Oh, hang on, we haven't fought by the other guys. Right, the Lerasms are going in. Uh, while the Lerasms are going in, let us uh, have a think. The China fired 320... Not quite time on target, but nearly time on target missiles, which is just a ridiculous amount of missiles. Um, America responded with 48 anti-ship missiles. Those were mainly these, the RASMs uh, from the Hornets, which have been scrambled as soon as they were seen, and a few aging 1980s harpoons. Now, here's the thing. They didn't fire enough SAMs to take the 320 yeah. missiles. They only got to fire 299 yeah. SAMs. There weren't enough. No, sorry, there were enough SAMs, but they couldn't fire them quick enough, even exactly. with the Mark 41s, which we've got. Uh, we've got two Mark 41s on, uh, yeah, yeah. on these things. Yeah, that's it. Pretty impressive because they started fire, uh, firing uh, pretty late. So it's pretty impressive, after all, that they managed to get almost 300 of them. Yeah, in that, the air. that shows how powerful they really are. And you can see the cells yeah. that have been used, viewers. Look how many cells have been used in uh, what, a minute, two minutes that they had to fire it. Yeah, so they just could not get enough anti vampires in the time it took the vampires to hit at a cost of oh, a word, oh. six billion over six billion tenfold yeah two ships were sunk uh cmp and nolly burke however i think they got off incredibly likely lightly because of the stupidity of missiles in dcs they're not clever in real life missiles are much smarter they can uh, liaise with each other and go for separate targets and dcc can't they just fire it i don't really know what what it is i don't think anyone really understands oh things are happening here ch yeah, they are well, with their old Sea Whiz. They're doing their best. Their crappy old Sea Whiz, come here! Yeah. And smash! Oh, it didn't damage it. Um, pressure mark? Uh, uh oh, damage happen? model failure. Damage model failure! No, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, visual bug. Visual bug! Now, 80s harpoons will probably be able to get shot. Watch this, viewers. Yeah, these Sea Whiz are very mechanical. I've got a question about it, Ash the Sea Wiz, uh, but after before we sign off, uh, I'll wait. Look, same bloody thing. It's going for a missile phone that's already dead. Oh, oh amazing. <laughs> well, at least they shot it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Please fix it. Yeah, it's going for one that's already dead. Yeah. Which couldn't happen in real life. That's physically, that's just bad simming because that couldn't happen in real life. It has its own radar, it will detect its own target. And that. Is under the water. It does not have a radar signal. It took a good amount of damage. It did. Yeah, I took like four it's, it's, thirty more shells. Immediately. Lols. Man, you die now. Yeah, it is working. It is working. Yeah. yeah. Right. They're slowly going to chew away them. Uh, I have a question uh, because it's obviously they're going to get you know die now. Yeah. Hundreds, hundreds of lorasms. Now this um, six thirty that I see a lot here. Yeah. Clearly does not have its own dedicated radar suite like a... Um, so if we look at SeaWiz, it's a, it's a self-contained unit, as you know. It has its own radar, its own electro-optical sensor, and, and you can just stick it on a truck or stick it on a, a ship, and, and it works. But this 630 system, it doesn't seem yeah, to have its own yeah, sensors, yeah, so it ties to the main fire control radar, is all I can think, of the ship. Exactly, because these are very, very, uh, very old, mm. and in, in the beginning they were used very manually, but they have uh, retrofitted these. If you look at the front of the ship, you can see the EUS, uh, the, the 
the globe just above the windows. Yep, visual. It's looking at the target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they actually connected it with the fire control radar and the EOS to spot the thing. So they can actually use the old the old weapon. It's mm -hmm. semi-modern, but, mm -hmm. but the weapon is still old. It's mm -hmm. very... Uh, it's not very fast and yeah, it, it's not very precise, but it can actually be used in this this fight. But, but as we as we talk about, these ships are supposed to just turn around and go home again, mm -hmm. uh, and they have some semi stealth cap capabilities. So the thing is, they are very fast, 36 knots. They can turn around, uh, and they shouldn't be spotted, and they can reload and then go out again. That's the whole point of it. One thing I forgot to ask is the range of the YG-83. I guessed about 80 miles, and that's why I set them at 80 miles, but do you know if I've misjudged that? Yeah, 180 kilometers, like 90-something. Oh, it's about, two. yeah, it's about yeah. running, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, doing a, uh, a war game from the mid-80s, uh, tomorrow actually, and I'm using some old Soviet missiles from the 1980s, 1970s, which had a range of 460 miles, and I'm going to be simulating a 460 mile shot. So, in some ways, the shorter range is not progress, but they're so much cheaper than those old missiles were. Plus, you need yeah. massive bombers, huge expensive bombers, to carry those big old kilts and kitchens and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the boost, if you look at this in, in real life in scale, mm -hmm. I mean, just the boost is as large as this ship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were enormous. Uh, and that, that's why, for example, when they are uh, modernizing the, uh, the Kirov-class uh, battlecruiser, mm -hmm. Uh, when they had uh, replaced the old anti-ship missile, uh, they can fit like 80 BLS cells, where there uh, were yeah, pretty few of, of the large ones before. <laughs> that takes a lot of damage, yeah? It does take a lot of damage. That's one tough, fast missile, CH. <laughs> 17 down so far, and I don't know why we're still watching, but for some reason we are. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, surprise, surprise, going for ships that have already sunk. Yeah, and we don't get any XP money for the ships, I think. Say again, sorry? The, the, the Chinese ships don't, we don't count the money for those. Yeah, now a good reason for that. I didn't actually put it in the uh, thing yet. I haven't put it in a yeah, database yeah. yet. So, um, I, how much are they? Do we know? No, I don't think I know, actually. I, I, they don't actually, I think they made these in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, I think they have 82 of them made, uh, mm -hmm. and they haven't made any more since, the, since then. So. Roger. It's, yeah, it's not. It, it's kind of setup. It's not something they are making more of right now. I mean, they're not blue sea, are they? You wouldn't. You couldn't get them over an ocean. No, no. So no. they are there for kind of like we, yeah, yeah right so it, kind of like the corvette the uh, russian corvettes we looked at the other day yeah you know, close it's, in yeah stuff. exactly it's post it, it's part of the coastal defense still wouldn't mess with them viewers especially if it came to the whole taiwan axis they are you know you'd have 80 of these just yeah. just lurking around the area all right Serge, i think we'll leave it there we can all see what's yeah. happening i don't want to use the viewers time um so no worryingly as we've got it simulated a u.s carrier strike group could not defend against uh, attack force that big though on the plus side uh, i doubt russia uh, china would ever muster 40 of them in one attack if it was more realistic eight of them instead of 40 then yeah they could easily defend it but 40 well, just... well, they, well they might after this video <laughs> well we're giving we get, <laughs> we're doing some free training for them some free free war gaming for them yeah but an eight no you wouldn't get through 40 as we saw it was kind of a lucky number i didn't even test it just pushes the envelope of aegis too far and, and does it so if you're China, please don't watch this and use 40. Uh, that's what I got. Uh, pleasure, CH. I'll catch you later. Yeah, sounds great. Bye.